welcome to my home um, and happy holidays. I'm Chef Jen Jasinski with Rioja, the Crafted Concepts group of restaurants. And welcome to our fifth awesome uh, wine dinner, virtual wine dinner. And today's dinner is all about sparkling wine, cava, bubbles, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to let Jen and Beth get into that more. Um, so if it is your first time joining us on the super I love this dinner because we love champagne oh, and it's the holidays. So um, if it is, so a um, couple little housekeeping, turn your oven on. Um, I would turn your oven up to about maybe 375 to 400 right now. Just get it going. Um, I put a little pot of water on half full over here. Um, and then we always temper all of our ingredients. So uh, we like to temper the, doesn't matter if it's the tart or the, the the beef, not beef cheeks, I'm sorry, the pork cheeks. Um, everything will cook a little bit better when it's not ice cold. So that would be great. Um, so before I talk about a couple random things, just because this one item takes a bit, I'm gonna put our beautiful cheese tarts in. Then I'm gonna talk more about this tart, but I'm just gonna help the time pass here. So I wanna mention that next year, 2021, which is gonna be a way better year for everybody. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, we are still gonna continue our virtual wine dinner series and um, things. So we're gonna start in February and March and we're gonna do Portugal with Jen again and Olay Imports. And we're gonna maybe travel through some areas in Portugal, so please look forward to that. And also, if you're watching this before Christmas and New Year's, at the restaurants we have some really beautiful food um, that you can take home to have a Christmas meal for the family, whether it's two people or six people, or New Year's Eve, foie gras and caviar and champagne. Um, Come to RiojaDenver.com or any of our websites and we have some really cool stuff. Oh yeah, and also um, ExploreTalk.com uh, is where you can find all the restaurants to do the ordering. So that's some great stuff. So um, I'll tell you a little bit briefly about the tart that's in the oven um, and then I'll let Jen talk about bubbles and everything. Um, so for this particular recipe, goat cheese goes great with champagne I think, but we have some really fun Spanish goat cheese in here. We have three different kinds of goat cheese okay. in here. We have a fresh chev. We ha also have that Marquis de Castillo raw goat's milk cheese that's been aged for three years. And that's gonna give this a really nutty flavor. Um, and this is just paddled together with a little egg yolk and, and a lot of love. Um, and the dough is a little charcoal. Um, that's the active charcoal, like it's a healthy kind of charcoal. The activated charcoal. <laughs> the activated charcoal. And we put that in our cream cheese pie dough and it gives kind of a really striking little black and white look. It's and I just fun. like that black and white kind of at Christmas time dressing it up. I don't know, kind of sounds silly, but. So as that's cooking, um, <laughs> uh, as <laughs> that's red. So as that's cooking, um, I'm gonna let Jen and Beth talk about the bubbles and what we're doing. Well, I have to say, this was one of the quickest yeses from the group when we were throwing around ideas of which theme should we play around with. And we said, oh, maybe Bubbles December? And everyone went, yes, can't wait. Mm -hmm. So we've been looking forward to this the whole time. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a really fun opportunity for us to teach everybody at home about kava and sort of by default a little bit about champagne yeah, because they're made the same way. and. A wonderful opportunity to demonstrate how incredibly versatile these wines are um, because they just they really literally pair with just about everything we were chatting before between french fries and caviar and potato chips and steaks. anything you can steak steak why not i mean that's crazy to barbecue say that, right i yeah. love barbecue barbecue, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, barbecue oh, gosh, caviar mm -hmm. i smoke beets i think pairing and like the traditional is out the window when it comes to bubbles because it truly it can go with anything. What are you in the mood yeah, for? Exactly. Yeah, anything you want to eat. So quickly, everything that we're serving tonight is from a winery called Navaran, and they are so near and dear to our hearts. They're one of the first wines that we imported. Patrick Mata, the founder of Olay, um, his father is good friends with Michel Barriada, who's the owner of Navaran, and so um, it was important to have a high quality really phenomenal producer and it was unbelievable that Navarone didn't have an importer back in 1999. That is so 20 years later and we're very happy together. Um, they are a grower producer which is something very special in the world of champagne. It means that they, I know isn't that exciting? <laughs> it means that they have 100% control of all of their vineyards so they make all of the farming decisions, all of the harvest decisions, everything. 
Um, and with the 2018 vintage, they've achieved a really big milestone. They are certified organic for oh, everything they produce. Fantastic, wow, that's, that's huge. huge. Which is a really yeah. difficult thing. They've yes. been organic farmers for ages, with, again, it's important that they make all those decisions. But now to be certified is really just a huge statement and commitment to continue that way in perpetuity. So everything you're tasting in the 2018 vintages and forward is certified organic, not just old fashioned, mm -hmm. so which is great. Jen, the process is a long process, I know that, but mm -hmm. also there's a huge expense on that. Yeah. To do so and to make a statement like that is huge. Because mm -hmm. um, most, most vineyards won't do it, they won't afford it. Um, they'll practice it, but they won't take the extra step on it. So this is huge for them. Can we, real quick, while the tart is baking, I think it's really interesting, in case people don't know, you know, cava, champagne, like what's going on, yes. you know, maybe we could talk about Method Champenoise, and if I thought, I always think that's interesting, some people, obviously I don't think cava is a lesser product, but some people think, you know, champagne has to be French. Yeah. Cava has a more casual perception, I mm -hmm. suppose, in the marketplace, and champagne is the best best, right? So champagne can only come from that tiny little parcel of France called champagne. Cava can come from Spain and there's several different regions. It's not really so much about the location in Spain, although most of it comes from Canada's right by Barcelona, mm -hmm. which is where Navarone is. But the process of cava very much pays homage, in fact, directly ties itself to the production methods of champagne. So méthode champenois, exactly. méthode traditionnelle, um, hooray! Yeah. So the way that we get the bubbles into the juice, that's really what it's all about. And the, the first step is to have wonderful wine. Mm -hmm. You must start with wine that's low sugar, high acid, in order for the aging to, cut, to take place and also to not have too much alcohol and sweetness in the finished wine. Exactly. So this is all about, you know, bubbles dancing on your palate and fresh and clean and juicy and bright but not heavy. Mm -hmm. um, so you must start with good wine and then you have to figure out how to get bubbles into it. There are many different ways of producing sparkling wine, um, but you can only use the Method Champenois for cava. So the way you do that is you fill this bottle. It has to be sold in the bottle that it's aged in. So you fill this bottle with the still wine. Mm -hmm. Then you add a little bit of something called liqueur d'expedition, which is quite <coughs> simply put um, wine with a little bit of <coughs> food it's and a little bit of yeast. In French? It's, yes. The dosage in French, okay. A little bit of yeast. Um, so that yeast with some food, sugar, or sometimes it's unfermented grape juice, mm -hmm. that triggers another fermentation inside the bottle. And then you close it off with a, like a crown closure, what you would see on a beer bottle, mm -hmm. to prevent any of the gases from escaping. So fermentation causes yep. a reaction that creates alcohol and it also creates CO2. And if you trap the gases, then they have nowhere to go but to dissolve back into the fluid, to the mm -hmm. liquid. And that, over time, creates a sparkling wine. Um, it and it's the most complicated way of doing it. It uh, is, but, but it's, it's delicious. It's the only way where you have the aging with that yeast cell. So you create this extra layer of flavors, the complexity of yes. contact with the leaves. It sits, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the Spanish in the cava method, they do the same type of riddling method with the yeast and they knock they it do. down into the bottle. They do. Right? And they yeah. freeze it. All hand and it's done. a really great, right. it's a, I think it's so cool to see and tell, I you know. It's, it's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, I'm going to just use an yeah. example of a bottle. Yes. You may yes. <laughs> yeah. um, but when I said you have to sell the wine in the bottle that it's aged in, and it has to age on the lees, Sir Lee, and so a winery will have all of their champagne or cava aging like this um, as a way to, well, actually, it's aging like this or like this, and so you can go into Navarone and they'll show you bottles and you can just see this really thin film of yeast. Yeah. Think about like an unfiltered beer, a nice yeah. micro brew, yeah. and there's often that sort of real fine, sort of almost like a clay in the bottom of the bottle. You don't want that on the side of the bottle when you're drinking it at home. So you have to go through a very slow process of ever so slightly turning the bottle every day and also tipping it so that not only does the, the yeast not stick to the side of the bottle, but it also slowly moves towards the neck once you're finished with the aging and getting ready to bottle and finish it to put the label on to sell it. That's called riddling, and it used to be done you know, by hand and very, very slowly. Now we have a, a wonderful invention called a gyro palette, 
which picks up a whole box of... We saw those yep. when we were at Navarone. Yeah, exactly. Yes. In another really significant so cool. um, investment, but yeah. it, it's a game changer for a small producer. Yeah. So the gyro palette will do the same process instead of needing, you know, 100 Grammys. Turning Can it every imagine? day. I mean, the carpal tunnel alone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, just, I mean, to be able to produce the amount of wines, I mean, yes. you'd be so limited and it well, really is time consuming. Yes, and that's a lot, that's a big reason why this method of production is really only used in yeah. smaller volume, um, unless you're talking about big houses and large budgets. So that process happens and then I should, I should finish it because it's the fun part. Yeah. So you've yeah. got the bottle like this, you have a little layer of yeast now up against the crown closure. You plunge the neck of the bottle into a, a freezing solution, an ice, more than an ice bath. Yeah. It freezes Liquid the yeast. Liquid nitrogen, thing. Liquid mm -hmm. nitrogen, yeah. Freezes the yeast plug, and then very quickly you have to <coughs> disgorge. Yes. And you can, you can, it's almost a bottle opener method, but you, there's a, ma a machine to do it, but not around for their magnums, they still do it by hand. Do they? Wow. And you knock it off, and the pressure inside, because it's sparkling wine, forces that frozen yeast plug out, and then very quickly you top it off with either a bit of another bottle of finished wine or dosage, which can add a little sugar or sweetness, sometimes unfermented grape juice, mm -hmm. or it's up to the, the winery what they want to use because you want to sell a nice full bottle. Yeah. And after disgorgement, of course, the bottle's going to lose a little bit. Sure. So finish it off, put the cork in, and then clean it up, put on the label. It has to be sold in the same bottle. Where and the that's why these happens. really good products are more expensive. I mean, there's even more, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. If people understand, like, what it's it goes a, It's a craft. It is a craft, and, yeah. and everything in here. Yeah. So Ginger is barking, my dogs. And if you guys haven't been here, we have two dogs running around, <laughs> and one is perpetually hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and a tank. Okay, tanker. so I will start to do this tart, um, and then this First is almost cheers. ready, and then we can talk. Oh, have a cheers. We have a cheers. Oh, let's cheers. Cheers. Have a cheers. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Happy holidays. Cheers. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to all of you, and thank you so much for joining us on all of these yes. yep. fun, fun um, yes. evenings. So we thank appreciate you. sure have made these last five months a lot of extra fun. I know it has. Yes. And I want to mention one other thing is you guys have a little um, cryovac bag of your pork cheeks for your entree. And actually, I'd like you to put those in a pot of water that's simmering right now. And we're just going to forget about those. So that is actually kind of one thing. So you just kind of label. You have simmering water. This can go in there. You can just not worry about that. Now. It smells so good in here. Oh, good. That tart okay. right now with the wine and everything. Oh, my gosh. Okay, good. So, so you good. Okay. Nice. the stickers again this time, Chef? Yes. So each course has a color coded. Exactly. Sticker. And this is purple, this course. Mm -hmm. And we gave you a little bit of an apple. And because apples oxidize so easily, you're going to have to slice it yourself. <laughs> but um, so I would like you guys to just slice up this apple nice and thin with a sharp <coughs> knife. Ginger, hush up. <coughs> and if you want to Timmy put her in the room, you can. She might just give her cookie out of the cupboard, Jenny, and try to get in the room. So we have some nice thinly sliced apples and then we have a little chervil which is one of my favorite herbs chervil salad with a little um uh, trevisio in there and then i have my edible flowers because you know i love edible flowers so i'm gonna put those on last that's so pretty, that's so pretty. the colors are great oh, yeah i just <laughs> like everything to be pretty and yeah. you have a little squeeze of lemon in here so squeeze a lemon and you have a little extra virgin olive oil now, I, I gave you more olive oil than you need, so just put a little light bit on there. You don't want to weight down uh, the herbs. And then a pinch of salt. So that's our little salad that's going to accompany this tart. And I say salad loosely. And then we have these tarts nice and hot now. Mm. Oh, and so we can smell it. Yeah, yeah that, that it's that bubbling. So you can good. smell it. Um, Yes, so they're a little warm. I don't have any feeling in my hands, so don't worry about me. <laughs> yeah, do not do this yeah, at home. At home, you want Maybe. to grab it with a towel. <laughs> and so I just want to put some a little fresh apple, a little chervil on here. Um, and I kind of like it to travel down the plate a little bit. And I have an extra one for Lee when your husband gets here. I have an extra one for you him. You are so kind. And we have some flowers. Because I you have to have the flowers on these people. Okay. And then, and I like how it kind of travels off because mm -hmm. I really don't want you to cover up the tart with it. You can, but if you put it on top of the hot, hot tart, 
Um, hot tart. Sounds like meat. <laughs> <laughs> you put it on top of the hot tart, um, it'll wilt. So this is also a nice way to, to not cover up the tart and to keep that keep it nice fresh, and fresh. while beautiful. you serve. Yeah. And great. so um, this is our beautiful Navarone brute. Sure. So, and let's see what you think. So, sure. <laughs> I love the Nashua. I really do. I just love the, the biteness of it, and I think it pairs with literally everything. I it, really, really do. It will. So, in sparkling wines, so champagne, cava, you're going to see brut, mm -hmm. you're going to see extra dry. Sometimes yep. you see nature, you see rose, and we're going to talk a little bit today about what most of those things mean. Extra dry is a trick, it means sweeter, and we don't have any of those here tonight. Navarone doesn't make any of those, their wines are all very dry. But this brut nature means that there's zero dosage. So oh, yeah. the dosage can be a little bit of like sweetness okay. added at the end, and they there's no sweetness whatsoever. So very, very dry, quite austere, and it's going to make it more focused and pinpoint acidity to really cut through. I love this one. trio of goat's cheeses. How perfect. Yes, I thought it'd be great. I, I love the apple here too because that's got that focus, you know, real pretty kind of apple acid that's always in sparkling. And maybe even that little apple skin. Mm -hmm. You guys ever yeah. feel like sometimes the apple skin is has a little yeah. tan into yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that's... Okay. With all, okay. Those, okay. With all those cheeses, how rich and all of that accompaniment mm -hmm. is awesome with the herbs. I love yep. that. And I always like to know what you think about the tasting. So you guys jump all in right. there first. I'm going to give a, a dog treat to my dog. And we'll be right here. <laughs> yeah. So we have our classic three grapes. Macabeo, Parellada, and Zarello. And this wine also has just a little bit of Chardonnay. There's a nice cheat sheet for those of you playing at home that gives you all of the grapes on the back of the bottle. So you don't need to remember them, and thankfully I don't have to memorize them. Um, but it's nice to know what you're drinking. So traditional cava will have those three main grapes, and once in a while it's a bit of a treat to get some Chardonnay or other more, more French in origin grapes. Jen and then, oh, I'm sorry, go that's ahead. That's okay. I was going to say about a year and a half in contact with the Lees in that bottle before they do the fun disgorgement process. Mm. Oh, what do you guys think of the pairing? <laughs> I'm oh, going to stop okay, talking so yeah. I can do it again. I think Beth's enjoying it. Wow. But the, you know, I've done a few goat cheese tarts before and I really enjoyed the super aged goat cheese that's in there in three years because most goat cheese is fresh and not aged as. Um, as much as this, it gives this beautiful nutty characteristic. It really gives some complexity to to it. Um, I, I'm I'm very much enjoyed how that came out. So I'm hoping this came out great. I love it. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love how this particular bubble because it doesn't have. It, it is a brew and the nature mm -hmm. like it really cuts through that. So each bite is fresh. Mm -hmm. Your palate doesn't get tired. Mm -hmm. um, and the apple and the. Uh, herbs in there play along with that as well. Oh, that's lovely. They do, really, isn't it? Really really it picks good. up the herbal notes. Mm -hmm. And the goat's smoke. cheese is so, so air light. It's so mm -hmm. fluffy. Yeah. And the tart is so beautifully, like, flaky, flaky, yes. delicate. Yeah. Wow, it well is. done. Oh, good. That okay, is good. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. I think that's great. Thank you. And we'll have same. to make sure Matthew gets some. And Absolutely. if anybody doesn't know, Matthew's <laughs> in charge of all of us. He's our keeper. One of these days you need to turn around the camera Yeah, we're going to smile. We're going to have Matthew come out here. Insert Matthew photo here. Totally, right? Okay, and then um, I'm gonna get out the next mm -hmm. couple of things. Is there a couple of blue dots in there? Is there anything? No. So the next item is blue dots, and the blue dots will be for our breast sola. Thank you so much. And so we have a few things in here. Um, we have some blood orange, um, some pastel vetrano olives, arugula. We have Rasola, which is an air-dried beef. And um, so, again, champagne's so versatile. I really wanted to kind of go all over with this. And we shave the Rasola for you, paper thin, so it's like a carpaccio. Um, and then the other components are, we have some beautiful olive focaccia that my pastry chef, Eric Dale, makes for us. And we rub the um, olive focaccia with some butter already. So we're gonna put that in the pan here in a second when I can get this in the lid. Oh, sorry. Oh, one second please. This is gonna show the eggs off. Okay, there we go. Now I just need to reset myself. So the persona and the are already excited how those Sorry about that delay here. I have a, a 
lighter. It's, just, it's not that. It's just a little. It's my stove being cranky. Yeah, my stove is being a little cranky. Oh, she put it back there. I love the detail on the bottle. Um, no, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm, I'm, I'm cautious because I don't want this to fly off and hit Matthew. Can you see that? So actually, Beth, um, can you show people? You telling me the right way to open? I know. I'm showing them how. Well, I wasn't showing them that. <laughs> that is so I'm happy thing. to do so. So um, let's take the bottles because it's be a little intimidating, but it's really important to hang on to the top of it at all times because you never know when you're going to have a loose one, right? Mm -hmm. So I apologize. I took the um, the, the uh, foil off. So there should be a little tab where you can uh, just tear at the bottom and it should release. But again, try and keep a thumb or something on that top there. Um, and on the side here, this is called the cage. And it's going to come down and it's going to turn. One, two, three, four, five and a half times. Um, pull the cage out just a little bit. You can usually, I, excuse me, you usually like to have a towel. Um, if it's not completely cold or it's been disrupted in any way, it'll bubble up. But uh, otherwise, you're gonna, I like to hold the bottom and I like to hold the top and I like to not point it at anybody. <laughs> and I'm going to try and release this as slow as possible. Long gone are the days of pop because you lose a lot of bubbles. And we don't want to lose any, so we're going to try and make as little noise as possible with this, and we'll see how we do. Sorry about that. <laughs> Technical difficulties with my stove. I apologize. Well, That's we still got a little yes. metal. One Ooh. thing that... And <laughs> there we go. And there we go. That little ding we heard just um, came back to us. One yeah. thing that um, Beth did but didn't mention is um, sort of nudging the cork at an angle, and if you hold the bottle at 45 degrees, it, it helps. You always see people doing that, but the reason is because it helps the bubbles to not sort of explode. Oh, yeah. I also like to twist a little bit, yeah, and the cork will coax itself A little back out. and forth. Uh-huh, exactly. And then you can kind of control the... There you go. Kind of control, but still the bubbles come, so keep it at 45 until you see whether or not you've got so a geyser. Interestingly enough, I had a bottle of uh, bubbles that I, it's my favorite bottle of bubbles. Uh -huh. it's, we're not tasting it this evening, but I could, I mean, opening these bottles are unbelievably hard. And so if you ever see that situation, see exactly. smoke. I know exactly what she's talking uh -huh. about. <laughs> I mean, literally like, I, I can't open it. Open. I, wow. and how frustrating is that, right? Mm. Anyways, long story short, take a paper napkin to it. So if you're having problems with a towel, take a paper napkin and it pops right out. Really? Yep. Oh, interesting. It's really interesting. Um, which one should we pour first, or does it well, matter? Well, we're tasting these both with, with this course, so it's a good time to have a spare glass. I might just grab us one. Oh, and I think Beth was getting ready to say, oh. you might notice when you're opening this that the Perlis tier, so we have Perlis roses and Perlis blocks here. Matthew, can you see that? That's, um, I think, the, the grandchildren. They're photos of all the grandchildren of Michelle um, Pariella, who's the owner of Navaran. So everybody loves their kids. So, so this is going to be a fun course because you're going to try these two rosés next to each other. So I'm going to make this really quick. And while you guys are pouring, if that's okay. I'm sorry about the dog. Uh, technical difficulties with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing you have to cook on this is the focaccia. And I have a, a pan getting warm, and it, and it is, and we're just, we have the butter on there. If you want to put a tiny bit extra oil in your pan, you can do that. Um, you don't need a tremendous amount. We just want to get this bread a little crispy on each side, and then it's perfect. The idea is that the bread has a little texture on the outside, but soft and fluffy in the inside. So that's the important thing here with this bread. So I'm just going to put this in here. And it's sizzling lightly. Tim's gonna help me not burn it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take, you guys have the brassola, and we put it on pieces of, pieces of uh, deli paper, it has this kind of wax, so you can just. Helps pull them apart. Yes. So that's worse. Wow, it's so thin cut. Yes, it is thin cut. It's another one of those meats that you taste it better when it's sort of paper thin. Huh? I think so, it just melts on your tongue. Wow. So I like to put this on like this. And Tim, you can just let her out if she's going to bark, please. Yes, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're just having... My old dog, Ginger, is 13. She's a little senile, and she barks at us because she's really hungry. So I don't know where we're at. I hope it's not disturbing <laughs> you guys too much. I apologize. I know you're out there. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yes, I think the breast will look paper thin, and you really need a mechanical meat slicer to do this kind of work, you know? You can't, you can't do this at home, so. Can't impress your friends and no. say you did this? No. <laughs> so then, what we do next 
is we gave you a little tiny squirt bottle that has our aioli in it. And I like for you guys to put a few drops of this all over. So um, we have, every bite has a little aioli. Because I think the fat is really important. So we'll go a few drops of that all over. And then, and then right here we have, oh no, you're good. And then right here we have blood orange jelly. So I really thought that the the blood orange jelly and the brassola together with these with these rose bubbles would be a really fun flavor. So I like and Matthew and I tasted this and I think it came out great. I love the idea of using blood orange, which is a little bitter with something like a rose. Mm -hmm. These are roses of Pinot Noir, really. Mm -hmm. So um, there's there's delicate flavors here, which will seem much more delicate, I think, by comparison to the blood orange, which is quite a powerful flavor. But then you've done the jelly, which should soften that as well. So. Yes. And with the olives, some salt. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Okay, so then we're gonna put a few olives all over. We're just kind of studying this with the olives. And then I have a little fresh blood orange as well. Those olives are buttery too, the castel chunk. Yeah. So good. The butteriness, I love that. And a little fresh blood Maybe orange. Like a citrus buttery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, wow. then we'll just put a little uh, arugula on here. And you can drizzle a little olive oil on your arugula, or you can do it plain and lean. It, it, it's whatever you like. I think in this instance, we can just put it on uh, the few leaves. And Tim, how's that piece of bread look? About 30 seconds, yeah. All right. So we'll put a few arugula leaves. And then you can talk about what you think about this delicious, sparkling beverage. Who's going to do with this? I don't think I'm going to want to talk much once you've <laughs> so I better get it in now. Yes. So we're tasting side-by-side -side rosés here, the twins, right? We've got two rosés, both based on Pinot Noir, both quite close um, and, and similar. The, the Brut Rosado, which is the one in the taller bottle, is Pinot Noir at 80% with Parillada. It's quite rare to find Pinot Noir in Penaves in Spain. It's a right. much more common right. grape in Champagne. So right. again, having these vineyard holdings from Navarra, they're founded in 1901. It's a it's a long-term project, and they are in Alt Penaves, so about 800 feet above sea level, but very close to the ocean, which means really cold at night. Cold enough for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir grapes to grow quite well for sparkling production. So. Um, the the Brut Vintage Rosé is produced with very, very light press. It's first press, very low pressure, just wanting to bring as much of the aromatic out as possible. 80% Pinot Noir, 20% Parillada. Again, you'll see the grape written on the back of the label, so don't worry if you missed what I just said. And that grape brings a lot of, um, a lot of brightness, a lot of acidity, and some nice aromatics. So I think that when you taste the wine, you certainly pick up on that. It's great that we're trying these side by side because the Cuvée Antonia, the Pearl is Roses, which is a very special, small project, is the, the highest quality fruit from all around the property. All of their Pinot Noir vineyards, they're sort of combed over first to take the very best, and that goes into the Pearl is Roses. Um, and that is, Free run juice, so they're not even doing a press. It's free wow. run juice, um, and then paired with a little bit of Chardonnay. So okay, nice. some more structure from a grape like Chardonnay, um, a little more serious in style, very small production, something around the equivalent of 300 cases. It's 600 six packs. Right. That's it, that's all they make for the entire year. So very, very small production, and this is certainly one of their sort of tete de cuvee is the term we use in Champagne. Tete de cuvee is the finest product from the winery, um, and they have these Perlis Blancs and Perlis Roses that are their two tete de cuvee so to speak. So one will have more structure, one will have more sort of uplift and aromatic, both based on Pinot Noir and just really delicate and pretty. Interesting with very little skin contact that they're still achieving this kind of color. So beautiful ripeness, but um, not a lot of skin contact, not trying to bring any tannin. So pretty. Mm. And that's gorgeous. And I just, and just for the last finishing touch, just when you finish toasting that piece of bread, I like to stand it up and it's a little dramatic. Uh, I think that has kind of a fun look to it. And then as you eat it, you just kind of tear some bread or, you know, put it on your fork. A little and, noshing. Yeah, kind of a noshing little platter here. So. 
Um, try it. Nosh away. Yeah. yeah. And I'm excited to taste all the flavors together. It's, it's so always exciting. such a shame to mess up the beautiful presentation, yeah, I know. though. And after you put this one out there, I'll make some bread in a minute. Prepare my topping. Exactly, the perfect bite, of course. Uh huh. What I love here, too, without even having tasted it, is I can just already tell the textures are going to be really varied. Totally. Which makes every bite the perfect bite. Just so much fun with the crispy bread, the creamy olives, the salty meat, the sort of juicy um, gelee. There's a lot of that gelee. Oh, get some gelee. Get that little bite. Cream. Cream. There's nothing better. Than cream, well, cream and champagne. <laughs> Kava. <laughs> I know, and we all tend to, you know, like we all say Kleenex for all tissue, you know, we all tend to say champagne for all yeah. sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. It's just a habit, but. If it's made like this, we can call it champagne. Yeah. I won't, oh. I won't give you Greek. Okay, so then how does it taste with the different wines? Let's see how, you know, what we think mm -hmm. about. Okay, so in this glass, mm -hmm. you have the Brut Vintage. Okay. A little bit of variata. Mm. Just so pretty. And a little, you know, now that I'm tasting it with the food, I pick up on more of the um, salinity mm -hmm. that's in this wine. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I love how the food plays with that. Changes the wine, the, the wine changes the food mm -hmm. a bit. It should, right? They're the best partners. Yes. Except for my business partner, uh -huh. right over there. That one. Well, mm -hmm. partners enhance each other, don't they? <laughs> You oh. too. Mm. He's so cute. Mm. Oh my gosh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now I better have another bite so that I can give an mm -hmm. accurate, you know, opinion. And that's why right. the, the, so the, the olive and the salinity is kind of where I was going because mm. I really felt like. But the, this olive is particular. Mm -hmm. you, can't just, you just can't mm -hmm. have a really briny mm -hmm. olive, so because mm -hmm. it, it brings that butteriness, and I really do love the jelly with this. Mm -hmm. It's a little pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. It's a really touch really of bitter fun. without really yeah. changing the direction of the course. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it that is, vibe. It is good enough. Yeah, it's so good. And the blood orange in there, awesome. And I'm realizing I said that the Perlis Roses has Chardonnay, and it doesn't. Oh, okay. It's 100 percent Pinot Noir. Is it 100 percent? Yes. Mm. I was, you know, it, it, interesting because, like body wise, I find them similar, but they each one played very differently with this dish, mm. and brought out some really cool, cool aspects of it. Yeah. See, for me with the Brut Rosé, I agree. The Brut Rosé, I picked up on all of a sudden, I was like, ooh, the same yeah. is so nice. And with the Perlis Roses, the wine seems sort of more more uplifted and more aromatic. And yeah. that really lovely softness that Pinot Noir can bring. So and nice. just perfectly cleansing the palate so that the next bite is just as good as the first bite. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what wine's supposed to do. Okay. Wow. Alright. I, I see, I, hold <laughs> on, I see caviar, so I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we can there are, go. <laughs> aren't many things that would let us just pass that plate along. I know, this is so good. <laughs> okay, well, and oysters, yay! Our next dish oh is a little play. You know, Thomas Keller has a famous dish called Oysters and Pearls. This isn't anything like that dish, but I just loved the name. <laughs> it isn't. But I love the name Oysters and Pearls because of the different caviar uh, components in here. I feel like it looks like pearls with the oysters. So when you at home, you're going to get oysters and there's going to be a rubber band around them. We've shucked them for you and then we put the shell back on with the rubber band so you don't have to hurt yourself and use the oyster knife. And um, so what we're going to do, and that's the yellow, sorry, that's the yellow tab. So all you need to do is take the top shell off and then gently put your oysters in a little pot. Okay, so I would say um, you don't want to get pieces of shell, and that can happen. It's just a natural thing, you know. So we have shucked them, but you could possibly scrape some shell into your pan. So just be careful. You just scrape the oyster. So like on this one right here, it's hard yeah. to see, but there's a tiny piece of shell, and I can see it. They're pretty easy to just and you just off. Exactly. You just take it off. And that's anybody who loves oysters knows sometimes you get a little shell. So we're just going to open these up. I love the pot. Yeah, isn't that the same adorable pot? Without how to get fresh oysters home. No, are these included in your home? Yeah, yeah. Rubber bands. yeah. well, we, where's going to start? Uh, Can I make a request? Yeah, and they still have all their liquor in them. That's um, amazing. Um, now, you know, we, well, we do this for you because this is, can be dangerous to do oysters at home if you don't know how, I think. 
you know? why I never do that. Yeah. I like I mean, all ten it's of not, my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> are, are the palm of your hand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the palm of your hand. Okay, so thank you so much, Tim. So we're gonna put no I don't. So we're gonna put the oysters in our a little pot or whatever you have. And oh I'm sorry, I took, I took it over here already. And then I've made a really nice sauce. I've taken uh, a little leeks, a little fennel, um, two of my favorite, a little things. cream, and simmered this with a few fresh oysters, and then blended this, and then I finished it with quite a bit of kava. Quite a bit. Are you it was quite this a bit. Yeah. As a as a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it I mean, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew and I. Oh, actually, Tim. I'll just make one right now. But Timmy, maybe I'll take those extra oysters. Maybe can you open up those oysters Absolutely. for me? Absolutely. And I'll um I'll cook the other one too. Here, I'll put it in here. Um, and here we go. So we have your your beautiful cream. We're gonna put the two things together, and we're just gonna warm this together. Um, and the idea is just to get that cream sauce warm, and the oyster will just slightly cook in the cream sauce. Mm. Um, and I personally think they should be just just slightly cooked. You just want the outside of the body to firm up and it to still be kind of medium rare if that's a you know thing, because you know, not with oysters, but you know. So the amazing chef that I am, yeah. not. <laughs> How am I not gonna mess this up? Like really well, seriously. <laughs> so because you put it all in here at the same time, right. when your liquid just starts to bubble, okay. we're gonna start to look at it and I'm actually gonna and Matthew has a camera over here. I'm, I'm going to, at the time, I'm gonna to, like touch the oyster so I can feel what it feels like now. It's gonna slightly firm up. Awesome. Just ever so slightly. And the, and the sauce is just gonna be hot. Just and that's it. I'm gonna pull it beautiful. right off. You know? Would you just, like these oysters in that pot? Uh, yes, we'll go right here, Timmy. Oh, perfect. And then, yeah, we'll just put another one on right here. We gotta make two of each dish here, or else the help doesn't want to help us work anymore. We have to feed the animals. <laughs> no. Um, so the other things that you have, um, you have some fennel and salsa feet, and we've taken the fennel and we've diced it. We've cooked it with a little perno. And salsa feet is a really interesting. I wish I had a, a whole one with me right now. It's an oyster plant, uh, and it is looks like a wood piece of bark almost. And, but it has a really great flavor. We've poached this slightly in champagne and butter. And um, so we're gonna put a little bit of this garnish in your pot too. So have you put that garnish in here. And this is gonna add texture because uh, if you don't have some texture in here, it'll be too soft, I think. Mm -hmm. And then in the bowl, we have our caviars. We have an Ocetra caviar and we have our salmon roe. And then we have a little bit of tapioca, which is the other part of the pearl component. Yeah, that just looks like pearls. So those are the things that we're gonna garnish it with. So as this is getting warm, and I'm just gonna stir this, why don't you tell everybody about what we're drinking? Sure. Well, I love that you keep saying pearl because this is another pearles, yeah. which is Spanish for pearls. Um, this is Navarone Pearles de Or, which is pearls of gold. Oh. So this wine comes from a single vineyard which was planted in, I think, 1962 or maybe 63, right around there. It's 100% Zarello. Yeah, and I never had the wine when I was like, uh -huh. Zarello. Uh -huh. so that's which so one of the reasons I was so excited that you chose this yeah. when you tasted through. So Zarello. You choose all the cool stuff. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I give you good choices. Yes. But <laughs> you really pin down. So Zarello is indigenous to Penedes. It's not found elsewhere, so it really is very ah. unique to the Cava region, and of course this is a Cava with 100% Sarello. So um, it is one of the one of the Cava grapes that is the most sort of diverse and complex by itself. Some people will talk about, you know, this grape brings freshness, this grape brings aromatics, this grape brings fruit or weight or flavor, and Sarello is a great one for everything. It also communicates soil really, really well. Oh, nice. um, it can get more ripe, which makes a beautiful still wine. Mm -hmm. But as I said in the beginning, for sparkling wine, you want higher acids, lower mm -hmm. sugars. So they harvest the Sarello for this wine about 10 days before they harvest the rest of the vineyards, even for sparkling wines. They also do make a still, which is oh, wow. also delicious. And we can taste that another time if you'd like. Absolutely. So <laughs> Perle's Dior is a very special project all about this one wine. And it also sees about a year and a half in contact 
with its leaves. I should say the reason it's significant and I keep telling you how long a wine ages on its leaves, of course that that tells you a little bit about how complex it will be mm -hmm. and the age of the wine and the quality. Thank you. But also, um, you're welcome. The requirement to be called a cava, you must produce in the method champenois, so the traditional disgorging, and then you have to age the wine on the leaves for at least nine months. Okay. Navarone always goes 12 to 18 okay. or more. And that's, you know, time is money. The longer the wine has to age before you can sell it, you have a delay, and so it's it's not so much based on a business decision at that point as as much as it's based on kind of what the wine is telling the winemaker that it wants to become. And so they always, as a rule, go double the required uh -huh. minimum in order to make a higher quality product. So um, this should have great mineral. It's really wonderful communicating soil, and then of course you'll also get the acidity and the body and the oh. texture and all of that. Okay. For a All truly right. unique grape. All right. Well, as we are doing that, I have my oysters, and they're just wow. just starting to firm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't wanna the color that. changes just a touch too. Yeah, and you can see their bodies are kind of just standing up a bit. Does that make mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So but they're not going to be. Yes, you're right. Opacity. That's a great uh, um, term, so people can understand that. So we're gonna put that on here with this salsa feed and that rich, and it is, this dish is rich. <laughs> and we are gonna then put, um, oh, you know, I don't actually have a caviar, I don't actually have a caviar spoon, and I apologize that I don't actually have a caviar spoon out. Um, but usually I wouldn't, but we're gonna eat it right away, so. So then we're gonna put. That looks about right. So let's talk about the caviar spoon. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're gonna eat it right away, so it doesn't matter. But if we have a can of caviar in our refrigerator, right. we want to make sure you don't have a caviar spoon, which is uh, mother of pearl. Mother pearl. You can uh, just use plastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plastic or wood or something. Plastic and a can oh. of caviar and a bag of potatoes yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so talk about why not a you know a metal spoon. You know, like all it, the are. caviar reacts to it and and. And what all the experts have told me is that unless, you know, if you're gonna eat it right away, again, you know, Serve it's gonna be fine. Mm. But if you're gonna go back to that tin, it does something, it affects the rest of the caviar. And I'm not an expert on it, but, so I just listen to what they say. <laughs> Sometimes you hear about non-reactive cookware. Is it sort of in that same mm -hmm. vein? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Aluminum will mm -hmm. react to things with high acid. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then the tarragon, I think, is really important in this dish. And so, I think we're gonna push this forward. So I think this is yeah. our finished wow. thing here of our oysters and pearls. <laughs> and so you guys have spoons, and I'm gonna. Oyster, I mean, I'm oysters, gonna, caviar, like, pretty epic. It's the holidays. We it's need the holidays. a little extra special. Let's oh, indulge and treat ourselves. Okay, so my mouth just. And of course, yeah, have so a spoon, good. everybody. And let's see what the ladies think. Okay. Chester, we know, likes it. And I will plate this one for Matthew and Timmy. So I had a little say, longer. He, he does I, like caviar, he likes everything. <laughs> but what were we gonna say? I was just gonna say that I, I'm i sort of a, you know, I go for the minimalist when it comes to oysters, I love them. And as many as I can get, so not minimalist in that way, but I usually just, maybe a squeeze of lemon, that's it. That's and I, I kind of sidestep things that are cooked oyster dishes that are cooked, but I'm telling you, I have never been so excited uh, good. to taste this a cooked is, okay. oyster dish. This is awesome. amazing. Um, I'm an oyster fan too, so. Mm. You know, and yeah. this time of year, it's winter, and some, you know, and I, and oysters are great no matter what you do, but I think if you're gentle with them, I think sometimes this warm kind of champagne poach is really fun. Mm. Um, it, again, it's very different, you're right, so. Um, I'm hoping everybody appreciates it, and wow. the bites of the salsa feed and fennel are fun, and the caviar, and... The tarragon is amazing. The tarragon is super important, so that's what, again, I wanted to mention that. So, Jen, what do you think? You're having a warm oh, oyster. Gosh, I'm having a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's having it. I like it that you're having a moment. Mm. That's a good sign. Well, I was just enjoying that kind of luxurious oh, cream yeah. coating my palate, and then once in a while a little caviar bit would burst. And a little briny. And then I got the tarragon and I went, ooh, that's nice. And then yeah. I bit into the oyster and this flood of sort of that salty fat. It's not mm. fat, but it's oyster fat. You know, that salty fatty that I love so much. So yeah, but you get what you love about raw oysters and also the richness of 
a cooked oyster dish with cream and this wow. delicious yeah. together. And how do you like the pairing? I haven't even gone there yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm having a moment with this dish. Wow. I love the salsa in this Ooh, mm -hmm. because it gives that texture in the mm -hmm. dish that mm -hmm. um, is it, it's it pairs up really nicely. I, I don't want to that. reach in front to nope. pour in front of you, Beth. Thank you. The pairing is beautiful. Thank you. No, you're good. I think this is really fun. The tarragon's just dancing. And it, it, it came back with the wine. I remember when I tasted yeah. this with Matthew, mm -hmm. we, we, and we put the tarragon on, but boy, we didn't realize how important yeah. really it was. You guys are going to have that one. I'm having another bite. Because <laughs> this so is really, really pretty awesome. I had my bite. The tarragon sort of appeared and then went away with the oyster. And you know, there was just so many different layers of flavors. Why do you that choose to have eat this extra caviar? Um, OK. I have no problem with that. <laughs> And then okay. when I took a sip of the wine, the, the flavor of the tarragon came back. So it's so yeah. fun to see what the wine really grabs onto and, and draws out. Yeah, wow. awesome. Let me see how this goes. And, I, and you know what, again, the fun, hopefully at home you guys are enjoying no, making a fancy <laughs> dinner that you, you, know, you can finish and you can have some fun wines with and have a celebration. And we thank you so much for joining us with that and mm. on that note. So, um, so um, as these guys are, wow. so I'm just curious about the pairing. Because I love how this kind of cleanses, but also goes. Like, what what mm -hmm. what are you picking out of the pairing that you think is fun? Or this brings out the tarragon in like a wow level. Amazing. But it, it's like powerful at first, but then it just lingers on your tongue, which is super cool. Um, and again, this is bright enough that it refreshes your palate. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important. I think that a lot of times people get palate fatigue. Because yes. you don't have something yes. like this to refresh it, just yes. with the bright acidity. And this is not a light wine, you know, but it, it's got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So I really love that. I'm also really loving, I, I wish I had more words for words like mineral and salt and saline. and Because this dish is showing me that there are about eight different expressions of, I only have three words to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it just goes and goes and goes because the, the wine is very mineral. Communicate soil. We have a lot of mineral in the soil here. Mm. The oysters have that saline. The caviar has a different kind. The what's what's it called? The terra terra. Mm. Oh oh sorry. I thought you said terra. No the little the I can't remember the word. The, the other thing that you put on here. This. The salsa bee. Salsa bee. There's salsa bee. Yeah. Yes. Terra bee. <laughs> That's got a, a sort of a very delicate, almost salty, but with a crunch the as crunch. well. Mm -hmm. And then layer after layer after layer of that of that savory but saline, but nice. mineral. This is a Very fascinating clean. dish. Considering how rich it, it yeah. is, I'm mm -hmm. not focused on the richness and the fattiness. I'm focused on all of those really cool, subtle nuances with the minerals and the layers and the savory yeah. notes. The this layers is, are great. Yeah. Mm. And then the oysters are like, ah, this that is so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This, <laughs> thank you. This might, I mean, I, I still got it, right, Timmy? Yep, still got it. Still got it? I know you've okay. already done your holiday <laughs> menus, but this is screaming New Year's. Like, well, <laughs> what else did I want for New Year's? But that dish is amazing. I mean, okay, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, wow. Good. Thank you. So good. Bravo. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Stop it some more. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but it has been, I want to say, as I'm, you know, the next cheek is going to be pork, the next cheek, the next course is pork <laughs> cheeks. But it was kind of, it was fun, but also hard to do an all champagne dinner. I have to tell you, we thought, oh my gosh, but then I'm like, oh no, I want to put, you know, similar ingredients sometimes, because I, you know, but most really wines will narrow it down for you, but yes, Papa doesn't. Gosh, I know. Mm -hmm. So, so pork cheek and what I did with pork cheek, and again, I'm pushing the envelope a little bit here. I braised these in red wine and pork stock. Okay, not champagne, but I braised them in red wine and pork stock. Um, and they are beautiful oh, here. Are you doing a homemade sous vide right now? Well, we we, we kind of cryo did at work, yeah. and now all you can do is just poach it at home. We can put this in the microwave too, by the way. So if you don't want to put it in a pot, it's just so easy to have it in a pot and you don't have to worry about it. Sure. Um, so a couple other things for this. I love fennel. Anybody who knows me knows I love fennel. And so we're making fennel three ways in this. And we have a fennel puree. Um, and by the way, I, I have no problems with the microwave. This will be heated up great in the microwave. You can heat it up in a little pot if you like. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to th throw this in the microwave. We have fennel that we've braised. And I'm going to ask you to finish this and caramelize it. So I have a pan getting hot. And I'm going to put a little oil in here. And then I have a fresh fennel component, so fennel three ways, and then the cheek 
and I mean, that's it. It's not it. I mean, there's a lot there, but <laughs> so I'll put the make it sound yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and it. that's it. You know, or just this. Yeah. So, right. so we have these beautiful wedges, and the dogs look like they're very excited about pork cheeks. <laughs> I bet they would be very excited yeah. about pork cheeks. They're not getting I'm any. excited about them. They're not getting any. <laughs> yeah, there will. So I have everything for your fennel salad. Sorry, I didn't wipe out my bowl. In this deli. And we have parsley, and we have fennel, and we have some orange suprems, as we call them. Um, and we're going to toss that in your other little container. You have some dressing, a malden salt, and a lemon wedge. So that is what that guy is for. Oh, oh hi. There we go. Scare me. Party starting. Keep me on my toes. <laughs> okay. Oh, that surprised me so much. Okay. <laughs> Okay, when that happens. <laughs> That's why you keep your thumb over the cage. We don't want to take Ooh. an eye out or man down. <laughs> Woman down. He just drops. Well, okay, Matthew. <laughs> Seven shots. So <laughs> on the so fennel, <laughs> we just want to caramelize it. That's not quite enough, so I'm going to let that get nice and caramelized on one side, you guys. So I really want some of that flavor, the caramelization on here. This fennel's been cooked already with a little white wine, a little vegetable stock, a little butter. Um, we've actually sous vide this at the restaurant, and we just want to get some beautiful caramelization on that. And then in this bowl, I have our fresh shaved fennel, parsley leaves, and orange. I'm going to take a little bit of this dressing. Again, I probably gave you a little too much, so why don't you drizzle just a little bit of the dressing on it at once. Um, and then some Malden salt, and an extra kick of lemon. Now, I think the extra kick of lemon is important because the rest of this dish is very rich. So a little extra squeeze of lemon on here. I'm gonna put a little bit of this dressing. And I'm gonna let this sit a minute to kind of marinate. I don't know if that's the right word, you know. Just like sit so it all blends really nicely together. And we just taste to make sure it tastes good. A little more salt. And a tiny bit more of this dressing. Okay, so that's gonna sit. And then I'm gonna turn my fennel and I know I can see the edges starting to get brown. And here we go. This looks nice on the fennel. Nice caramelization on there. We'll caramelize the other side. And that's all we really, we'll let that other side caramelize and that's all we need to do. And now, because we have been warming, um, oh, thank you, Tim, this fennel puree, now all we have to do is simply plate this. So I'm gonna pull this bag out and, you know, to me, Put this in something because I don't want to make a mess. I um, I love cooking in a bag like that. It makes it super easy, super easy cleanup. Yeah. And it cooks perfectly. Yeah. I'm just gonna so I don't make a mess when I cut this open with scissors, you know. And I'm sorry if you can't see that. Here I'll move that out of the way. I'm just gonna have this in like a little bowl. So cut it open and then the sauce pours all over sure, the place, sure. you know. So but that's all we do here. So. We've taken these pork cheeks, and again, literally, in case you're wondering, it is literally a cheek, but there's a veal cheeks, beef cheeks, pork lamb cheeks. There's this beautiful halibut cheeks, like halibut cheeks are one of the best oh, yeah. things. Mm. You know, there's a little place that is just this nugget of perfectness on them, on, <laughs> on fish and animals. <laughs> it is a nugget of perfectness. Okay, so I am going to take some of this fennel puree, and I'm gonna put a dollop of it, should I move these, Matthew? Okay. I'm gonna put a dollop of this on the plate and then I'm gonna kind of spread this out. Um, because I want you guys at home to be able to taste the components separately if you'd like to. Because sometimes, you know, you wanna like eat this with that. You know, I, I like mm -hmm. to kind of cruise around the plate and see. Sometimes mm. the sauce can get really overbearing sometimes. You know, like you wanna, you wanna compartmentalize. Well, you can taste it better too if you taste them each. Yeah. And then you can sort of play Thanks. wine geeks, right? We totally. like to play around with dissecting flavors. So, and I always love the, the texture. Mm -hmm. So then next, I'm going to take a spoon and I'm going to put our cheek on the plate here. And wow. yeah, that so looks how long is that braised for? It looks delicious. Yeah. Um, you know. Like we actually did these in the pressure cooker at work. Did you? And you know I just love the pressure cooker back Yeah. Um, Talk about so like some of the things coming back from the past, you know? Yeah. Isn't that <laughs> so funny? I know, I yeah. love that. I, just, I really do. And yeah, you know, like, you can do things in a pressure cooker uh, in such a little time. It's just so nice. It's just such a great tool. 
Um, once I got, once I learned how to use it and not be scared of it blowing up on me. It's, <laughs> it's frightening. You know, it's really scary. And it was, it was great. So, okay, yeah, so we have that there. Um, and then if you like, and you want a little bit more sauce, you could put this on and reduce it a little if you like, but I think that's perfect. So I think that's fine, but that is something we can do. And then I like to put the fennel on here. Oh, check it out, Becky. See who's there, you never know. We got someone at the front door. We're gonna see who's here. <laughs> All right, so here is our fennel and we're gonna put that on the plate. And then a little bit of this nice fennel orange salad off the side. I don't want it to get too, again, I don't like to cover up what I'm cooking. Yeah, I think the parsley is so important. Okay, so I think that is gonna be just right. So I think that is gonna be just right. So we have fennel three ways with braised pork cheeks, and this is going with a champagne, and a very special champagne, of course they all are. And then we'll see what you think about this, because this is kind of, just kind of pushing the edge a little bit of seeing what can go here. <laughs> Love it. So I'm hoping everybody loves that. I think you know we will. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let me tell you a little snippet about this wine. This is Pearls Blancs. This is really the Tete Cuvée. I loved my last visit to Navarone. Um, Michelle told us that 50% of this wine is made at harvest. Oh, wow. And by that, he means that it's the free run juice from when they harvest the fruit, the grapes that burst and sort of oh, you wow. know, leak their juices. They have a tray on the truck that drives wow, these grapes into the amazing. vineyard. And they gather all of the, the, wow. the juice that, that drains out of the freshly harvested grapes. It's the best, the freshest, the most wow. expressive. 50% of this wine is harvested from the, the truck, <laughs> the trays that they have on the truck. I wish there was a more romantic way of saying it, but it's just such an amazing fact. Um, that also leads a little bit into the reason that it's such a tiny production, 306 packs for the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. So 150 cases. <clears throat> so you might want to buy an extra couple bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it is, you're not going to get this anywhere. And this yeah, really yeah. is very, very special. So it's 80% Pinot Noir, 20% Chardonnay. It's a Blanc de Noir, except that there's a little bit of Chardonnay in it about 80% of this, so it's star bright, perfectly white, sort of golden straw, right, all these really light, pretty tones. It is so pretty, pretty tone. Because that so last pretty. one had this more yellow to it. This mm -hmm. one is definitely more, like we said. Yeah, it is straw, it's beautiful. But 80% Pinot Noir, so Blanc de Noir in that way, and then 20% Chardonnay, or maybe it's 10%. Oh wow. It's a very small amount of Chardonnay. Oh. This is four years on its leaves. Four years, okay, that's where all that's that such amazing, an amazing that richness, yes. that kind of brioche, that... Yeah, that yeasty. Mm -hmm. That's why I would you know? say yeasty and brioche is another great way to, you know, because that mm -hmm. ready yeasty mm -hmm. quality to it. Absolutely. Oh, I'm fascinated by that investment, you know? Ooh. The four years is a really long time to really be long sitting time. on product when you think about it. I know, but good things take it's time. So good. good things take time. It is. I mean, so. look at how long it took to make this. No. <laughs> These are all jokes here, people. <laughs> all right. I love those smile lines. <laughs> it's holiday <laughs> jokes. Okay, come on. Wow. I okay, think try this. this. Is something so very fun. special yes. to go with something very special. Yeah. And I loved the, the, as soon as I heard you talking about fennel, and then that you caramelized it. So you're taking this beautiful herbal thing and then adding a little bit of sort of that rich mm -hmm. caramelization to the edges. And the beef cheek, come on. Yeah, and Beth, you definitely try a little bit, yeah. Beth, oh, I'm gonna get some. Okay. I know, Bethy. Okay. I've been around long enough to know yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> this perfect bite is it. really, really key. Yes, beautiful. It's just so much fun because you know, you can play with the rest of the dish, but yeah. I, I always want my first bite to And that's what I, 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 you know, I like the components. When we do compose food at the restaurants, we think about, um, at our restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, how it eats for the guests. Because we want you to be able to enjoy the components, but also be able to eat it together and like, you know, get it in, in its beautiful flavors. And that's why my cookbook is called The Perfect Bite. Um, I'm always searching for that perfect bite. Um, this is so tender. Yes. Wow. I don't even need a knife. For no, you. you don't need a knife. Yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. And I will say at home, um, 
you know, if you didn't temper the cheeks, you do want them to be in that simmering water for a good 40 minutes. You want them all the way tender, you know? And you can microwave that bag too. That's not a problem to microwave it too. Um, you can't overcook it in You the bag. cannot overcook That's it. That's the thing about it. Keep it in the bag. Yeah. If you take it out of the bag, yeah. you're I gonna, mean, you can have a chance of You can overcook, overcook it if you left it in that bag for like 12 hours, but well, we're not yeah. doing that. <laughs> You're gonna wanna eat it sooner yes. than that, I would yes. hope. not right. doing that. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah, but not For me, that. the home cook who needs all the uh, precautions to not screw it up, thank you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Because I, I want to know if the red wine is competing too much. Like, or, or do you think? Because no. I talked about this with, with Matthew over there because he's my sounding board there at Rioja. And I just, you know, what do you think? <laughs> it does not compete. Okay. It, honestly, I, it integrates perfectly into the flavor of the beef cheek anyway. I don't notice it. It doesn't stand out to me at all. It's it, perhaps a marinade, it, it tenderizes, but it's not a flavor element mm. in a way that would compete at mm -hmm. I would mm. I would know it's in there, but it's not pronounced. And Even more sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. Cheek. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and then, and then yeah. the fact mm -hmm. that it, the, the fattiness of the cheek, it, it's all playing really mm -hmm. well together. Okay, the herbal and sort it's of spicy fennel I just love with this. And the textures too. I, I really think for um, cooks at home and your at home cooks, you know, you want to think about textures on your plate so everything's not mono, whatever it is, soft, hard, crunchy, you know. Monotone, yeah. 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 Um, and I like the hot and the cold. Yeah. You and know, we, or room temperature, like so. And we did give you some malt and salt, but I don't think it needs extra salt at home. I think mm. it's perfectly seasoned. It's um, well seasoned. Yeah, it's really but we did give you some crunchy salt because I know sometimes, like my husband Max, he just loves having that texture of the crunchy salt. So it is fun. Taste this it salt. is fun. So you can yeah. actually back off on the salt a little bit to leave room for that. Yeah. Because I do too. I can sometimes really like what that little crunch. I just had a little <coughs> taste of, of the, the spread, the sauce. Uh huh. The fennel. Yes. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay. It picks up a lot of the orange. Like unctuousness out of the mm -hmm. like the fat in those pork cheeks. Yeah. Mm. And those pork cheeks, they've been braised, like I said. Um, and typically, if I was to braise them, I would have braised them probably overnight. I would probably put them in at like 185 and put them in for 12 hours. But in the pressure cooker, we do it for like 30 minutes. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they're perfect. So I have to Jen, say, and everything smoke. about this dish would also work with a beautiful red wine. I yes. brought a big red for us to enjoy later because it's the holidays. So, And that would work well here too, but the fact that we're having this with champagne really lets the fennel and the orange and the parsley yes, shine. Yes, speak. Exactly. This is great in this. Yes. Yeah, it does. It is nice that champagne keeps all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, like, because red wine does tend to, you know, get you know, the star larger. The show. Yeah, you know, it's like this, I'm. This is, everything's, <laughs> really, everything's really well framed yeah. here, and all of the flavors come through. It's really, really. Okay, so for the pushing the pushing the envelope. Well done. I love okay, it. Okay, so for the final thing and dessert, which is never a second thought over here, is we have a tangerine souffle cake. And Eric, my pastry chef at Rioja, who's fantastic, we bought a whole bunch of satsuma tangerines and we zested them, we juiced them, and we reduced the juice. And he put this beautiful reduced tangerine juice with a little, I think maybe Grand Marnier, uh, inside our souffle uh, base for this cake. Um, inside, we're gonna do a hot souffle. For at home, though, we wanna do this kind of souffle cake. Because then, you know, you get it beautiful at home. And it's just so light and fluffy. The souffle cake. Oh my gosh, look at that. And so it reminds saying, me almost like of a strawberry shortcake. Gosh, it's but I know it's yeah. much fancier. Though. Very fancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and it's then that light. I know. Spongy. And then ah. we have an almond tweel, an almond kind of lace cookie tweel, because I really think the almonds. So in, in this particular wine, I was all about, we have to have almonds and tangerines. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was going with this particular with wine. And then we just have a little bit of tangerine mar marmalade. So a little bit extra on the plate. Um, and then this cookie. So it's as simple as that. We don't really need to do a lot. You know, when you have something so beautiful, why mess it up by putting too many ingredients on it, okay? <laughs> and that is how I would plate these. Uh, very simply, if you have a little extra marmalade, save it, put it on your biscuit in the morning. Oh, that's a great <laughs> yes. idea. And um, let's taste this final one. 
and see what we think and thank everybody for joining us but mm -hmm. um Madonna. yeah so, so we're now on our sixth bottle of bubbles and i hope yes. everybody at home is just feeling as happy as we are yes <laughs> it's such a nice little cheerful feeling it's a good night when you have six bottles of bubbles <laughs> hopefully they you'll finish will. all of them yourself well no well, but we will not. um so the the sixth and final bubble of the night is called navaran dama and think of Dama as the Spanish translation to somebody fancy, like an, a baroness, a duchess. Ah, okay. Dama is like a, a, a sophisticated okay. lady. Okay. And so this is sort of the bridge between Navarone's Brut tier, which we tasted the rosé mm -hmm. and the Brut Nature, and their Perlace tier, which are the really special, super rare. Mm -hmm. Dama gives us a taste of the really special, super rare, mm -hmm. but make enough of it that it can be available by the glass in restaurants. So this is 80% Chardonnay. Ah, so okay, so we've gone to 80% Chardonnay, mm -hmm. which is so, again, so interesting in Eight, Spain. 85 maybe. 80, I'll have that to much check Chardonnay in Spain is not normal. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah. and that's part of why this is very, very special because yeah. Navarone are one of few grower producers or farmers or wineries at all who have access to Chardonnay and yes. this kind of quality level and, and enough to make a wine yeah. of it. Um, so that's kind of where the Dama comes from too because they like sort of the queen of the Chardonnay yeah. grapes, right? Yeah. And it is 85% Chardonnay oh actually and then 15% Parellada. And there's a fun story with Parellada that I'll tell in just a minute, but I want to get through the, the Dama stats with you first. It's 85% Chardonnay. You're going to get a lot of structure, a lot of power. It's a more sophisticated flavor profile, and that's because of Chardonnay. This grape is just ideal for sparkling wine production. It's, mm -hmm. it's why you find it mm -hmm. in Champagne exactly. so frequently. Yeah. Um, and why it's a grape that can even stand up to oak aging. And you know, yes. we've got Chardonnay sort of all across the spectrum mm -hmm. from the unoaked to the heavily oaked mm -hmm. um, to the Champagne. It's just a, it's the queen of grapes. Um, Parellada is here, and that's very significant because the, the family name, you may have heard me say at the beginning, the founder and owner of Navarone is Michel Parellada. Ah, there you go. Um, okay. And when the winery was established back in the, the turn of the century, um, they grew quite a lot of this grape. It's also called Montenegro. Um, and at the time, they sold to a winery called Reventos. They were just farmers, Navarone was. Okay. And they were so instrumental in the establishment of the Cava Dio, Denominación de Origen, it's just a regional, it's the name for the regions in Spain, Rioja's a Dio, mm -hmm. yep. um, Cava's a Dio. They were, the family was so instrumental in establishing the Dio and everyone had to kind of come to a common agreement on what we were gonna call all of these grapes. And in Spain and many, you know, quite mm -hmm. rural areas, there's a local name okay. for many, many things. And everybody knows it means the same as that other local name. Right. But you can't have 18 local names yeah. written in the bylaws of a DO. Yeah. So when they were establishing it, must be Method Champenois, it must be nine months minimum, it has to be made from these particular grapes grown in approved regions. And this family had so much Montenegro that they said, let's just call it Parilla. That's so awesome. That's so it's named after it. It's named for the that's family. That's so cool. Yeah, which is really cool. What are we naming after Beth and I? Well, we're working on it. Okay. I think we are our own region. <laughs> You probably will be your own region. I love <laughs> Domas. That would be so early to see them. All right. Well, let's see what you guys think of our last tasting. And as we are doing this, I just don't want everybody to forget out there that we will be doing Portugal in February and March. And then I think we're going to be doing rosé and sake and some Italian. Yeah. So we're going to be really doing some other fun things too. And I'm hoping that you guys will want to join on that. But okay. But what do you think? We have okay. this tangerine can I cake. Back? We all, of course you can. <laughs> of course you can come back. You're stuck with us. You're stuck with me. <laughs> I'm so excited so for Portugal. We'll have to get together and plan too. that. Mm. Okay, so. And I can't help but say like, the holiday meals for Christmas and for New Year's, this is a perfect way. Mm. Um, indoor mm -hmm. dining is likely not to be happening. So mm -hmm. get this to go and really impress your close friends yeah, or family. Yeah, stay safe, stay at home, and stay with family. Come and, and see us. We can still cook for you at home. The menus and look amazing. To. Like all four of them honestly mm. look the delicious. delicious. So <laughs> it depends on which one. One of my favorite things about what you ladies are doing is 
letting people revisit that part of you know our old normal mm -hmm. where you got to feel fancy yeah. and really indulge in something that was beyond our own humble home cook capabilities at home yeah and still be able to sort of tap into that and i love that you've expanded it to holiday meals because the so holidays fun. This year is no exception. Right. Are stressful right. enough as it is. Right. So to be able to really say, you know what, I'm gonna treat myself and I don't have to do it myself. And to have Chef Jen in the kitchen, this is amazing. And so if you thank want to have you. a fancy dinner that's just two yep. of you, yep. we'll make you know easy. two people can have this really fancy dinner that Honestly, we'd love to do for you. I don't want to do all the sides. I want to <laughs> I know have it all done. <laughs> because I want all the sides. I want to no, I still want all of the stuff to taste, but for two people, that's a lot of work. So honestly, it's a lot of leftovers. I have a feeling, I have, oh, that is good. You end up like wasting food you later because there's no way. Yeah, you can exactly. still be eating turkey for 10 days. So I personally might be ordering Okay, so <laughs> by the way, I'm just going to say this I'm still winning. I'm still winning. You know what I love the about this? and almond are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and what I love Nailed about it. this is not saucy. Like, it's just simple. No, it's super simple. It's so simple. But super light. And um, I love when you get that tangerine zest in there. Yep. A bite. Is, it, the champagne tastes one way. When you eat the almond twill, yeah. it tastes another way. And I think that's kind of really fun about this. Is so, twill a technical term? It's French for tile. It's just so fun. And, yes. I might have to, like... Just those feels. Oh, hello, I know you're very close to my bite. I can assure you that it won't happen. <laughs> He's fine. He's not gonna. I know. I know. He only well. jumps up on my counter when I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> He's the what? He's the best behaved invasion of personal space. Yes. <laughs> I've ever met. Okay, so to wrap yeah. this up, um, Chef Jen, Jen, Beth, Tim. Uh, Rioja Matthew. family, Ole Obrigado family, we want to say happy holidays and thank you so much for joining us. I hope you join us again in 2021, which we know is going to be an awesome year. Right? It's going to be amazing. Absolutely. We're going to have an awesome year. And we're going to continue all this fun. We so are going to. What more, what more can we ask And for? if we don't see you, happy holidays and thank you so much. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers. Happy holidays. Cheers. Cheers.